I think it's about time we showed the Cutlass some love. This is my 1986 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme G-Body. I've had it parked out here at my other property for about five years now. Prior to that, I started stripping the interior in preparation for the metal repair that the body desperately needs. That got put on the back burner as I focused on other aspects of life, but now I desperately need a hobby again, so it's time to resurrect this beast. I've already replaced three out of the four rusted out quarter panels. I just bought some of the pre-stamped G-body panels from eBay and uh, welded them in with a uh, flux core wire welder. Then I just grinded the welds flat and turned out pretty good. At least for my first time ever welding sheet metal. But the areas which I didn't fix have gotten pretty bad, especially at the bottom of the doors and the trunk lid. So here's the driver's side rear panel which I replaced. And the panel which I didn't replace yet. Let's see what horrors lie within. That is stuck. There we go. To my complete surprise, it doesn't smell absolutely horrible in here. It actually smells kind of normal. It's even got custom Flintstone propulsion system. Let's see what horrors lie inside the trunk. No forms of life, at least not yet. So here's all the interior parts that I tore out. And the driver's side quarter panel. Finally get to weld that on. Scratch, scratch up the interior any more than it already is. Well, that didn't sound good. Okay, I'm just waiting for any animals to scatter might be safe to approach. Whoa. Okay, I really thought that was a creature or something. But it was just a clump of dirt falling out of the door hinge. At least something still works. You're probably wondering why I'm even bothering trying to repair this car. Well, a part of that is stubbornness, but a larger part is the sentimental value that this car holds. This is my first car. I really like the G-Body Oldsmobiles with this particular front clip, so I set out to find one. In 2007, I found it listed on Craigslist. It turned out that the seller was a longtime family friend of ours. So he sold it to me at scrap value. Now I knew nothing about automotive at the time, and I barely even knew how to drive. I bought the car when I still lived in Philadelphia, and shortly after buying the car I moved to Florida. My intention was to drive the car down, but that didn't happen, so I had it shipped instead. Like I said, there's some stubbornness there. It originally had the Oldsmobile 307 VIN code Y engine. 
But since that engine was dead, and I wanted something with more power anyway, I found an Oldsmobile 350 from a 69 Cutlass. That has the same exterior dimensions as the 307, so it was literally a direct bolt-in replacement. I also wanted to avoid swapping in a Chevy engine because I insisted on keeping it Olds powered. Plus I didn't want to do any kind of modifications to the frame or the engine mounts and anything like that. So I bought the 350, learned how to do an engine swap and swapped the 307 out. This car quite literally turned me into a mechanic. So I got the car running and registered, and then I used it to take my driver's license test. And then it became my daily driver up until about 2014, getting all of 10 miles per gallon along the way. Well, let's find out what's taking up residence next to the old 350. Let's give a warning to all the wildlife. Time to vacate. Well, there's considerably less snakes and possums than I anticipated. Well, when it fires up, they'll know it's time to go. I don't remember leaving this oil cap off, but apparently I did. Got some dead dinosaurs in there. Oh, he might have some brakes. Now, being as young, dumb, and broke as I was when I built this engine, it is a marvel in broke ass engineering. That is to say, it's a marvel that any of it actually worked. For example, I got the MSD 6AL ignition box. I received this box in lieu of payment for some automotive work. I did not have the actual MSD distributor, so what I did was I took a ordinary GM HEI distributor, hollowed out the coil area, and I took um, a spark tower from another distributor cap and just epoxied it onto the top, and then ran a lead that went straight down to the button. And on the coil side, I barely remember what I did on here. I made some kind of adapter out of epoxy for the main lead wire. And it ran just fine up until when I parked it. I'm sure it still runs fine. We'll find out. And every tire on the car came from a junkyard. Every one of these tires was mounted with the starter fluid explosion method. And you can just forget about balancing. These are the 14 inch SS2 rally wheels. I actually found these in the trunk of a 77 Cutlass that was in the junkyard, and there were five of them, complete with center caps and beauty rings and all. So all I did was clean them up and primer them and then spray them with some black lacquer. And when it came time to change a tire, I would just use the weight of the car to break the bead loose. But I'm not sure if that was the result of me being broke or if it was just me being cheap. There was absolutely no way I was buying a dual exhaust transmission cross member. So I notched the factory crossmember instead. This is actually the very first time I used a welder for any practical purpose. But it held up and it's still in there to this day. Let's see what's living under the old air cleaner. Quadrajet. Throttle's not stuck. And for the carburetor, I've just got a Rochester Quadrajet that I Pulled off, uh, I think, a mid-70s Chevy pickup from the junkyard. Wanted to go the non-computer controlled route on this vehicle. But I rebuilt the carburetor and adjusted the jetting and everything and never had a lick of trouble out of it. This is the 170.57213 AWP casting. When I did my initial research on it, the internet led me to believe it may have been one of the 800 CFM carbs. And just for good measure, there's your electrolytic capacitor used as a vacuum plug. And the intake manifold is aluminum, and it came off of an um, early 80s Oldsmobile Cutlass uh, 307, but it's not one of the 
intake manifolds with those tiny, tiny ports. That's the A5 casting. This manifold is the A4 casting, which has port sizes that more closely match the number 7 heads on this 350. The radiator fans came out of a Dodge Stratus found in the junkyard, but it fits pretty well and I never had a problem with it cooling. And I wired up the uh, fan relays with some junkyard relays from an F-body Camaro. And it's got the old AutoZone fuel pressure regulator. And of course a clear plastic fuel filter. Because you just got to be able to see the fuel that's going in. One of the only actually brand new parts on the car were the Dynamax long tube headers with 2.5 inch collectors. But we'll get into the monstrosity that is the exhaust system in a later video. Let's see what kind of rusticles are forming in there. Oh my god. Hey, there's still liquid in there. The G-bodies didn't have choke cables. They had electronic chokes, so I had to make this bracket out of an old computer power supply and ran my own choke cable because I just wanted absolute control over that. I didn't trust the automatic choke. And believe it or not, it actually still had cold AC when I parked it. I wonder if that's still the case. The compressor is kind of stuck. Ah, there she goes. See, I did build some safety into this thing. Well, before I say that, let me make sure I didn't actually bridge it or something. Nope. It's an actual fuse. Charger works. Alright, today is tomorrow, and I got some charge in the battery, assuming it took a charge. So... Let's find out. Got some instant engine destruction juice in aerosol form. But before we do that, let's just see if it turns. Well, she's not seized. signs of life. And I do not have a fire extinguisher, so... <laughs> it almost seems like it wants to live. Runs surprisingly well on starter fluid. All right, we're finally starting to get some gas in here. Alternatively, I could have just filled the carburetor up the float bowl through this vent tube, but I didn't bring anything to allow me to do that today. So we're just gonna keep hitting her with starter fluid until it pumps enough gas. Because this is a mechanical fuel pump. Almost, we're almost there. Fuel in the carb. That's some continuous running. Oh, 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 oh. Almost. So close.
Well, I don't see any flames yet anywhere, so we don't have to get the fire department involved just yet. Try to make some room for a human being in here. Feels like we got some brakes, so. Let's see if the transmission goes in the gear. She does. Let's see what it's gonna take to get this thing to actually move. And there she goes. Breaking loose all the plants that have grown through. Oh shit, what is that? That ain't good. Well, we ain't moving now. I think the transmission linkage came off. Yeah, it turns out I hit a dirt mound that knocked the trans linkage into neutral. Let's see if reverse works. some level ground I won't have so much trans linkage trouble hey brakes work well that finished that tire off all right I guess all that's left to do now is call the tow truck there she goes all right, the Cutlass is home and ready to receive the love it deserves. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button, if for no other reason than to watch a slow motion bankruptcy in progress. I'm counting on you guys to keep me committed to actually finishing this thing, because if it sits for another five years, I don't think there's going to be anything left of it. I should have a follow-up video coming pretty soon, where I'm going to restart the bodywork. So anyways, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that, and thanks for watching.